Today, we just learn with regular expression how to extract Chinese characters, English words, and punctuation. I just Control Shift I, the hard key that I just create to initiate the Python idle. I've just installed the package. If you don't know how to install Python package, feel free to watch the video top right. Now, import PyChipin. There's the Chipin, which is a Cantonese pronunciation, just like before, abbreviated as JDC. Oops, typo. It should be import. I'm sorry. Import Chipin as JDC. Now, let me put it inside a text variable, a text string, let's say, Nehoma. Then let me try Japanese. Konnichiwa. Okay. Then let me try extracting words with hyphen. She's a kind-hearted person. I want to try in this text string, turn it into a text and split it into ne, ho, ma, something like that. To do that, we need a package called regular expression. It comes with Python, no installation required. Let me import re, which stands for regular expression. Then I'll define a pen for text extract. Name it pet as we'll encounter pattern later. So what's the pattern here? Note that we use double quote here and wrap it around with a square bracket. Now we are going to extract the English words and they include hyphenated words, which is like this one, kind hearted. So we put a hyphen followed by a small letter A to Z, A to Z, and then a capital letter A to a capital letter Z. Zero to nine, meaning that English words contain cap or uncap letters and can be hyphenated. Okay, then a pipe key, which means or. Here we need to get both English and Chinese. So a square bracket for Chinese slash and a small letter w meaning any character all right then we need to extract the punctuation such as question marks and full stop square bracket and then comma remember don't start with a full stop because it has other meanings in regular expression so i put a comma here a question mark an exclamation mark apostrophe in a full stop. All right, then create a variable to hold it called ptext. It doesn't matter how you call it, just name it whatever. This whatever variable equals re, which refers to this imported regular expression re dot final. So what's inside final pattern, which is the basis that you extract from this string, which is the string assigned to this text variable. Okay, it will return a list. That means it will return this text into a sequence of one comma two comma three, just like the list that I mentioned in the last video. In this list, you can apply what you learned about for loop to perform other tasks. I'll go deep when we translate the Cantonese caption into Japanese. All right. For the pattern, it's just this pet variable we defined above. Here, if you don't use the pet variable, you need to you need to type the whole sentence out, which I don't prefer, as I can reuse the pattern variable next time. So I just type p a t here. For string, it's just the text to be translated. Where you can see inside this text variable. Okay, enter and run it. It should be split. Oops, it's split into individual letters. Oh, I see. Because I missed something behind the English part. That means for pattern, we need to make some changes. Just miss the plus sign here, as this plus sign has special meaning. Okay, 
Let's get back to whatever here. Regular expression. Find all pattern equals path. String equals text. Now the whatever variable should return something like this. Nehoma is split into three characters. Nehoma. Konnichiwa. And you can see that it's split into individual hiragana. I don't mean to split it like this. My main goal is to translate captions with mixed languages. So we need to keep the Chinese words, punctuation, and the English words. You see that kind-hearted person is split as one single word. Okay, let's say if I want to get the Cantonese pronunciation from the whatever variable, let's call it trans. It uses JDC, which refers to the Cantonese pronunciation jipping, dot, convert, and wrap around whatever with a bracket. It shouldn't work as whatever is a list, but just give it a try. You see, it won't work as it isn't a string. It has to be a string inside convert. So in other words, if trans equals JTC dot convert text, which is this one, the text string inside. Enter. When you run it, it will show Nehoma here, right? Konnichiwa, along with the exclamation mark, is treated as a single item. Let me see. It should be a text object. Because I see the single quote. Yep, it's a text. All right, let's say if I want to change it to list, simply trans.split. And it'll be like this. Nehoma, question mark, konnichiwa. She is a kind-hearted person. So that means I can't lump the two translations together. When you encounter Japanese, you still need to create another translation. But anyway, leave it by now. Oops, let me try it out. Call it JText. Matte kudasai. Please wait. Who are you? It shouldn't be a comma here because I'm starting a new sentence. Should be full stop. Okay, JTC convert, J text. It treated this as Cantonese, doi, with spelling D O I 6. Let me JTC dot convert, J text, split, and it's split like this. Don't te kudasai. It's now treated as one word. Here we can just ignore it because I just tried it out for fun. All right, just recap. Today, we just learned with regular expression how to extract Chinese characters, English words, and punctuation. That's about it. Ciao.